And can anyone do a check to see if you can see it on Facebook? I see it. There it is. We are live. Awesome, everyone. And we want to certainly welcome everyone to an edition, a live edition, a chat edition of Let's Talk America with host Shana Thornton. Of course, I am Shana Thornton on air, a host and producer of our national award winning show. And today's uh, episode is a very important one. It's one of a matter of L-O-V-E, love. And it may not be exactly what you think, right? You may be thinking of romantic way, but we're also going to dig deep into loving yourself and how exactly to build and maintain a healthy relationship in 2024 for everyone out there listening to us live or on demand. We're not talking about what happened 10 years ago or 25 or 30 years ago. You have the opportunity to reset. And what better opportunity to do that with the Valentine's coming up? So I am no expert at love, but I promise you I have five individuals with me tonight, okay, that are going to talk about it and put it on the table for you. And, you know, here on Let's Talk America Radio, we have a tradition where we give each of our exclusive guests the opportunity to really tell their background and what got them where they are today. And we've got a great mix from a pastor to a family therapist to a YouTube influencer to a relationship coach and a healthy uh, wellness advocate. So we've got the right bunch. Some are married, some are single, but all of them, I can assure you, have touched love in some shape or form. And they've got the, uh, I don't want to say battle wounds to show up, but they've got the notes to share. We're going to do that tonight. We do ask you to share this stream if you would simply share or tag your favorite person to listen in because it is a beautiful conversation about building healthy relationships again, okay? So if you do that, we'd love for you to just go ahead and share this right now with all of your family and friends. Blast it, get it out there, and we're going to set a great example of love. And I want to start off with allowing our um, our in-house therapist, she's a friend of Let's Talk America Radio, the one and only, Tineo Jones. We love having you on. You've talked with us about so many different issues. Tonight, we're going to talk about the L word. <laughs> okay, but first, tell us what got you to where you are today. I know you've got a great experience in um, helping so many families and individuals, but tell us about your platform. Yes, yeah, so I'm Tanelle Jones, and <laughs> I've been actually since I was five known that my purpose was to help people recognize their worth and to love on themselves. And so I have wonderful opportunities to do that every day. Um, with my private practice, my LLC, and um, with my work with the Medical University of South Carolina. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thank you. So excited to have you on. You are, are one of our favorites. We talk about, again, so many subjects, but tonight we're going to talk about relationships and building that up. So thanks for being with us. We're going to move right along. We also have with us uh, Tinsley Bradford. Tinsley, you and I uh, go back. It's been a while in this world of uh, broadcasting. I know you are a go-to expert when it comes to dating and love. So this is right up your alley, right? But tell us what got you where you are. Yes, Shanna, thanks for having me on. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm just tired. I was tired of watching people, including my, find themselves in unhealthy, toxic relationships that just weren't a good fit for them and um, overlooking the important telltale signs that many times we see early on and we just don't do anything about it, move forward. And unfortunately, we learn when we're already in deep and invested in that relationship whoa, this may not be for me. And so um, I started coaching some years ago, put a book out back in 2015 called The Successful Free Dating Method for Women. And um, that that is a no-nonsense advice guide. It just reminds women that they're more than enough. And so they don't have to do that. They don't have to settle for less. And so just my overall experience and option of so many women that's going through toxicity, these days men too, it's not one-sided, um, mm -hmm. me to become a coach. And so I, I do that on tinfred.com. You can see me on my, my website with all of the things I've been doing over the years. 
I love it. I love it, Tinsley. Thank you for being with us. I know you're going to offer some great and fun advice for people. And thank you for being so authentic and real about you were simply tired. And I think there are a lot of individuals out there who uh, have that testimony, but not always as transparent in sharing it. So thank you for being with us. I want to now turn our sights to Mr. Deontay Burden. You're a YouTuber, among a lots of other things. But tell us about your platform, sir, and what got you here. Hey, how are everybody doing? My name is Deontay Burden. Uh, I'm an accountant by profession, but I'm also a YouTuber. We have a channel called Changing Lives, hosted by Deontay Burden. What we talk about is a motivation channel where we talk personal development. And also, from the past couple of years, we went through the whole tra- I went through a whole transition of being divorced, but I'm also a black single father. So we try to make videos that come from that perspective where things I might get my insight on, and also some of my sons may give insight on that as well. I also host a, a financial channel, Mr. Short Dollar, which is probably my bigger platform where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. And I'll have a great conversation with you guys this evening in regards to this subject matter, especially coming from that old perspective of being <coughs> a single father and transitioning through divorce and doing this stuff, dating and everything uh, going forward. Awesome. Thank you. We appreciate that, Mr. Burton, for joining us. And we appreciate your perspective on it as well, because um, we are certainly seeing um, more and more diversity when it comes to the dating pool out there as well. So I appreciate your experience. I also want to bring up our other gentleman with us tonight, Pastor Randy Atkins, sir. Thank you for being on with us. You're a best-selling author as well. Tell us about your platform. Hey, welcome. It's really, really cool to be on this today. I am author, teacher, speaker, preacher, and I have just really enjoyed the piece of us becoming authentically who we need to be. And so in relationships, that's going to be extremely important that if you are who you're supposed to be, then you can show up correctly and you can then really be in a space where you need to be. I am a a father of three. Um, I've been married for 26 years. So I have some definitely some good stories and good information to be able to share and potentially some good advice for those that are out there that are looking into relationships. So you can find me on www.randyatkinsjr.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. I appreciate your experience and expertise that you bring to the table as well. And last but certainly not least, we have the one and only Jackie Madison on with us. Jackie, you're a friend of this show as well. You've been on for various topics, usually pertaining to physical health, but we're talking about matters of emotions and the heart tonight. And tell us your take and why you're with us. Yes. Well, good evening. Again, my name is Jackie Madison. I am a wife, a mother of two beautiful children, and also a certified lifestyle and weight management specialist. I have been in the medical field for over 20 years. So one part of being in the medical field, um, the side that I'm on is the aesthetic side. Um, So we talk about loving yourself a lot uh, from the inside out. I manage a plastic surgery office um, and a cosmetic laser center. And I am pleased to say that I'm able to offer uh, the healthy side of this because even though I'm in that industry, um, I can say that I've done all of this uh, myself from the healthy side of promoting um, loving yourself from the inside out. So this is going to be an interesting conversation this evening because we can bring it from how important this is from a health standpoint. Yeah. Thank you so much, because I think so many times, and I know the therapist on with us can, can vouch for this, matters of the heart can affect people um, physically. I've heard so many experts say that. Cardiologists have come on this program and have said that as well. So it's so interesting. So we want to make sure, um, and I don't want to put all the pressure on any of you, but we certainly know that sometimes a matter of love, it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And a lot of times, it's nothing to do with your behavior. You cannot stop what other people are doing as well. So We're going to talk about all that, but let's first get there. Tanil Jones, you're with us. You're an in-house therapist. You work with so many couples um, that I'm sure have made it, probably some that haven't made it as well. Things inevitable out of your control, working with families, dealing with different uh, issues and concerns. I guess when it comes to building and maintaining a healthy relationship, I'm no expert like you, but I'm going to assume that it first has to start with ME. 
Tell me, Miss Jones, is that right? Does Shana or does Deontay, does Tinsley, um, does Pastor Randy, does Jackie, do we have to get it right and have some balance within before we daydream or realistically meet the love of our lives? Yes, you do. It's so important to um, really work through who you are as a person, develop a sense of self, understand. We call these areas of importance like family, social life, intimacy, what those mean to you, what's important for you in those areas so that you can actually communicate those when you start to meet someone. And that's an ongoing conversation. I think sometimes when I work with couples, they might have this conversation before they get married. Maybe they don't. And then they stop having the conversation because they don't recognize that we are always changing. Um, but it is so important to know yourself, love yourself, and heal any trauma that you have experienced so that you're not trauma bonding with someone else. Yeah, that, that's such a great point. You know, uh, Tinsley, you uh, opened up and said you were just tired. Um, realistically, and of course, you are watching the national award winning Let's Talk America with Ho Shane Thornton. We offer real talk for real people. We're talking about L O V E tonight, right? And we want everybody, we want females, males, want everybody on to watch this. You're welcome to give your feedback in the chat as well to let us know your thoughts. But Tinsley, when you said you were tired, um, I guess how much of that? is the people to blame prior to who you may be meeting? I mean, how do we get there? How do we get saying we're tired? Oh my goodness, you know, and um, the comment that Trinell just made was just so important, trauma, healing. Yeah. Noticed over the years, a few things, you know, one of the things you cannot coach, me as a coach, I'm not a licensed clinical therapist. That's a separate thing. I can coach it, rah, rah, you back, spirits and hope you make wiser choices but i can't help you up here because you can't coach mental illness you can't coach crazy and i'm just gonna keep it real you know some things you have to just do within and you have to take the time to say hey something going on here that's not quite right i even need to be going into a relationship i dated god over the years and i'm not bashing men at all because all of the different and you know i have a responsibility too um as a single woman out here dating in today's world and back then that I need to make sure I'm paying attention to the signs and I'm making sure that I'm making wise choices. I of dating guys, I'm going to give you an example. One guy told me when I was ripping and running around in my car, driving around, and this was years ago, pardon me, I've matured since then. But um, he said, I said, um, I'm always driving, picking up your child and I'm dropping them off going on. Oh, he told me, I don't date women that I, I have to do those things for. And what he means by that was he didn't anyone he gonna have to drive around so it's gonna be the opposite and of course that relationship didn't last but let me say this what if i stayed there he told me front that didn't make sense to me but somebody somewhere would have been okay with that and so that right there is like a key turn you have to be looking at things like that can i deal with this relationship the guy just told me he's not going to date women that he has to drive for or do anything for so now i have a decision do I move forward? And so other things like that happened along the way in my life. I was meeting guys after guys that just were not, you know, adding any value. And I had to do as well. And it took a long time for me to get there. But I had to watch that. And I think for me, when I started noticing signs and all these things, I got tired of dealing with that type of person. And I started saying, women, ladies, we got to do better. Let me see, show you some steps on how to stop doing that, because I did. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that because I think, again, I want to thank each of you for your transparency because that's not always easy, but we have the right panel on board. Um, Deontay Burton, you're with us. Um, you were married yourself before. You were very transparent. Say so now you're in a different mode. You heard what Tinsley said. You heard what Tennille said. Um, how much of moving forward or existing where we are today has to be with the ability to really overcome the past, right? Because at some point you have to admit if you're 25 or 45, everybody has a past. Now, of course, if you're 55 and 60, your past is probably a lot more busy than somebody at 21 years old. But how important is it to make sure that people have that intact and making sure they're not moving forward, blaming or assuming everybody's like that because the last person they dated was neglectful. The last person they dated was dismissive, moving forward in a healthy manner. I think it's very important you do that because uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't think too many people want to date somebody. They got to, uh, every time they talk to them, they got to hear about the ex or the ex-wife, the ex-girlfriend. You know, I don't think that's going to be uh, too enjoyable for anybody to listen to that all the time. Somebody venting and talking. 
Uh, I think one of the biggest things that people have to be realistic with themselves is that time period they need to just get back to, you know, some sense of normal where they say, I thought what Tenzin said was very important in regards to knowing yourself. I was married over 20 years <clears throat> and I know once I got a divorce, it hit me. I had, I didn't even realize I was so engaged with making sure my family was straight, take care of my kids and everything. I, I, I really wasn't sure who, who, what I like or what I like to do because my life revolved around making everybody else happy. And that's not too difficult to have happen to you when you're married a long period of time. Right. So once you start, once you get out of those uh, particular situations and you're dealing with somebody's new, someone new, um, you have to make sure you give yourself enough time. Um, you know, and, you know, I was, I mean, like I gave myself about a good year before I even really thought about just dating, you know, just really dealing with somebody else because I know I still was, you know, kind of mad about this, mad about that, thinking about this, thinking about that. So I think you had, and being realistic, and that was just a me thing, but it, you can't, it'd be very, very difficult for you to move forward because I know some people do transition to another relationship once they get out of it. It's no problem. I mean, to each his own. But on average, and I've seen, you know, just, you know, my situations, friends, different people outside looking in, you got to be realistic about getting a lot of stuff out your system. That doesn't mean you're going to forget everything or some things you might run across them, you know, strike a nerve somehow, even though it was years ago. But you got to make sure you're right before because it's hard to kind of uh, deal with somebody or, or pour into somebody else uh, until you got yourself together. You got to make sure you're good. If you're not good, nobody else is going to be good. Yeah, that is such an important part. And I thank you for sharing that because it, it is about making sure we're having honest conversations with ourselves. Pastor Atkins, I, I've got to ask you that being on with us, speaking of that, and of course, we want to have a fair and balanced conversation here on Let's Talk America Radio. Um, I, I think, and, and, I, and Ms. Jones know this better than me, and I'm, I'm just stating a fact when being in the world, as I have been for some time now, that when it does come to males sometimes or men to say, let me evaluate what happened in these relationships when you have counseled and spoken with men who maybe have had dating relationships at work or they were a part of uh, serious long term marriages that didn't work. How much accountability must we force ourselves to do? And, and, and I know we have a therapist on, but you're a pastor who's done some counseling as well when it comes to male or female to say, I, I, maybe I need some professional help to get past this hump because maybe I'm not over what he or she did to me from 15 or 20 years ago. That's a great question. I think we're hearing a common theme from Tanel Tinsley and um, also the, the rest of the, that the idea is that we have to find out from ourselves and I really like to focus on not only your spiritual, but also your soul and your body. And so when we begin to align in this, these areas, we can then be more accountable to who? That's the question. Who are you being accountable to? And my idea is this. You should be accountable to your creator. And if you understand what you were created for, then you can then start to begin to move into a, an area in your life where you can now have relationships because we are relational beings. We are ones that um, want to be out there. We want to be able to um, have relationships with um, not only other people of the other sex, but those that are um, the same as us. We want to make sure we can connect. But how can we connect unless we have the accountability of understanding who we truly are? And how do you begin to find out who you are? The questions that come from that is then, you know, begins to give us a path of saying now in a relationship, how do I show up? And there are so many things I think that we sometimes overlook because we're just scratching the surface and we're not actually trying to figure out what was I? Why, why am I here? Why was why was I born to be here? And you're coming into a relationship as uh, Tanel talked about trauma, as there are other things that sometimes when I'm having conversations with people, they're also looking in the past. But every time I look outside and I look at the grass, the grass that I'm looking at right now is not the grass that was here last year. And it's yeah. the same thing with us. You are not the same person you were five days ago. So what we have to begin to understand is we can't use those things in relationships and we have to then be accountable to ourselves to say, can I show up as who I am 
right now in this present moment and then begin to talk about whatever the decisions that you need to have in your relationships that you're in alignment with your spirit, your soul mm -hmm. and your body. Wow. That, that And you said a lot. And that is so important because it is about that balance that's there. So thank you for bringing that out. I want to give a friendly reminder to those that are watching us, especially if you are live and if it's on demand, but go ahead and put a quick question in the comment box. We see a lot of kudos and thumbs up. Thank you. Let us know if you have a question out there in general, maybe not for you, but for your best friend or someone at your job, because we all know when we're in the break room, there are lots of things that come up about relationships. If you've been married for 35 years or if you're dating someone for three weeks, those questions always come up. And as he said, there's a need for humans to interact in some way that's there. You know, um, Jackie, I got to move into this. When we talk about the B word of balance as a wellness coach, I know you're huge on that. You have pushed self-care for so long. I think Mr. Burton said it best, but sometimes you people are in different situations and they can sometimes wake up, right? Not always necessarily in a breakup, but maybe they wake up three months later or three years later and say, wait a minute, I've, I've dedicated so much to this relationship. I've really lost um, a bit of myself where I'm not necessarily in the best shape, where I have put on 25 pounds in three years or when perhaps if it's something important to you, getting your hair done or getting your nails done, that's something you're not doing anymore, but you're not feeling good about that. Help us out. And that's true for, I think, everyone, right? It's it, Because there are things people do that they enjoy, but how do they achieve that balance when they're trying to build or maintain that relationship? Also, in addition, because there are so many people that also have other responsibilities, such as children or taking care of sick and aging parents. Yes, Shana. Well, like you said, coming from the health aspect of it in terms of healthy relationships, the first thing you have to start out, and like you said, not um, talking from um, expert of a, 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 well, a, 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 a therapist, but basically it's important that you love yourself, right? Wow. Um, you have to take care of yourself. And one of the things that I always um, have been passionate about promoting is loving yourself from the inside out. And if you start by loving yourself from the inside, it's gonna show on the outside, right? Because all of that is going to affect um, your health and you can't pour, as we all know, from an empty cup. So you have to be able to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You mentioned things like, for instance, today coming on the Zoom and I asked you before we got started, were we gonna be on camera? So of course we all know that we're around the house and we're just comfortable, but it does something when you get up. And I like to say, when you get up and you get dressed, right? Even simple things like that starts out by loving yourself. And you, if you put forth an effort to just get up, get dressed, right? Um, you put on that smile and then you'll be able to pour out to others and people don't under, and one of the things that I always talk about is like a smile is everything. Just something is that makes you feel good inside. And then you're being able to um, go into a relationship with someone else just by giving them a smile. So all of that is important when it comes to building a relationship because it's starting with you first. And yeah. then now you're being able to pour out to other people how you're feeling in building um, your relationships. I love it. I love it. And like you're saying, you have to be able to pour from it. And you can't pour, right, Jackie, from an empty cup, right? I mean, we've had so many health advocates on Let's Talk America radio podcast, where from cardiac surgeons to uh, endocrinologists to nephrologists that were saying, as busy as you may be with anything in life, they're like, but what are you going to be if you can't keep yourself healthy, if you're not even getting those important screenings? So I think you're absolutely right when it comes to self-care with those things. We still have to do things that allow us to be balanced as much as possible. Ms. Jones, we're back with you and you, of course, are our therapist with us today. And of course, this is for general information and great conversation. For more particular information with your concerns, if you're listening to us, we do advise you to see someone such as a therapist or a medical provider if you're having any concerns emotionally or mentally going on right now. But I've got to ask you this, Tinsley touched on it when she said, you know, if I would have stayed with the gentleman where he said, no, I don't do that for women or that I date, I don't do that. It's and I know it's a question that millions of people have or people are asking it or not. How do you know when to call it off? When to pull it? 
Miss Jones, because you know that's the tough thing when you when you may end up on a breakup or when you're saying we're going to be together forever, whatever situation you may find yourself in. There are so many people that say, "Should I cut it off at the three week mark where she started to show me she was a little erratic? Should I cut it off when he refused to donate something to the children's charity at the local fast food restaurant?" Help us out. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. I think that people go into relationships thinking that because who they are, they meet somebody and they're like, I can change this person. They already see that this person doesn't match what they want, what they need, but they believe that they're the person that's gonna get this person to change. <laughs> so they're, as humans, we have five basic psychological needs, our sense of safety. So if you already know you don't feel safe in any way, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that's a good sign that maybe you don't need to be in that relationship. Our sense of trust, our sense of power and control, our sense of intimacy and our sense of esteem. So really understanding what those mean to you as an individual, how are they being um, kind of groomed in this new relationship or impacted in this new relationship. And if any of those don't feel comfortable, then that's a sign. But I would always, I just kind of tell people, if you're going into a relationship to fix it, then it's not a good sign. You're not going to change people, no matter how good of a person you are. So, um, and I appreciate that. And I hate to chuckle, but um, uh, as someone who has lived for more than two decades at least, I've heard that so many times from friends. But I can change him or her. I just know it. If I hold on in it, if I cook enough meals, if I stand by his or her side, they're going to change. Tinsley, I don't need to tell a dating wellness coach. Uh, that there are millions of men and women around this wonderful world of earth who believe they can do it. N yes, she shows signs that she's not right. She's not balanced. It's not going to fit. But I'm, and how many times have people said this, but there's an attraction, there's chemistry, there could be something else there, even intimacy, right? Being transparent. I think Ms. Jones touched on that, where people will overlook things that really sometimes can end up being detrimental. Help us out. You know, it is it's so important. And, and that's settling. A lot of people will settle. And that's why I, I talk about settle free. What does that mean? It means you're not going to settle for less than you deserve, not even just in relationships, but in any area of your life. If I'm broke, I don't want to settle and go, well, that's it for me. I'm just a broke woman. No, I'm going to figure out ways to get my money together and work on a strategy or game plan to improve my finances. You know, and, and, and Jackie was talking about physical health. You know, if I'm overweight or even out of shape and want to improve my quality of health, I'm not going to sit there and go, well, I just got this stomach. That's it. No, I'm going to get up, take programs, maybe hire her and go, hey, help me get my body right, my mind right, and all of that. So in relationships, I'm not going to say, well, I guess he's just abusive. That's what it is. I'll stay in this relationship. No, I'm going to say, uh, this is not it. I'm not mm -hmm. comfortable in this thing. I'm not going to move forward. You know, what we have to understand when we're meeting people, they're strangers. They're strangers. Mm -hmm. People have a mindset that they've developed over the years, and you were nowhere around while that mindset was developing, whether right. it was trauma from the past, whether it was, you know, a, a, a old situation or relationship they was in, they're bringing things in. And we're all talking about that today. We're bringing stuff in there. Now it's your job to be observant of those things in a non-judgmental, kind, loving way, of course, yeah. but very cognizant. We're in a world now, you can't ignore these signs. You know, if someone's saying these things, you cannot ignore that. And so I've noticed people are just going in these relationships unready. They're not ready. There used to be a saying a you know, long time ago, be the change you want to you know, see. You know, we hear that all the time. I mean, that's true. But you also have to make sure when you're going in and you see these things, that's not good. You don't necessarily want to be that. You want to be who you are in that relationship because people are very influential. They can be very manipulative. And if you're desperate for this relationship to work, you're tired of being single, you're looking at everybody online posting their rings and they're talking about I'm married or I just got a man and all this. A lot of people are comparing themselves so they're rushing in relationships just so they can say they have that too. And they haven't thought it out. And it's unfortunate. And so I just think you, you, you just got to make sure you're getting these things done. You know, I remember I've had therapy twice in my life, not mm -hmm. because I'm some looney tune, but because mm -hmm. I needed to make sure I learned how to handle different personalities, you know, like that mindset things. Sometimes you're dealing with people who have a mindset 
that you're not really, you don't understand how to communicate. So it creates arguments. It creates unnecessariness. When you talk to a therapist or a counselor, a lot of times they'll show you how to number one, cope and deal with those things. Or if you need to make an exit plan for that, you know, and so it's so important to just make sure that you're not settling. That's a big word. Stop saying, oh, well, this is it for me. It's not it. You have so many look at this show look at this platform look at all these people on here with all this wealth of knowledge there's so much yeah. insight for us to utilize pull from that get your support groups out there get your girlfriends and boyfriends together let's talk about it you know yeah. and see what's going on thank you what a, what a great point you did make and you brought up the word settling right we heard so much of uh, i'm not settling uh in 2022 and 2023 i'm sure we're going to also hear it echo here in 2024 deontay i want to put that question to you um, being on with us tonight. Um, people will say they don't want to settle. And I'll say this because I've heard family and friends and, and acquaintances say that. But how much of that needs to be balanced with being realistic too? Because, and I say that because I have ran across individuals who have said, well, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle. And there have been times I have thought, obviously, I do agree with Tinsley that you don't want to settle um, for some things. You've got to have your list and everybody's list of standards is different. But how much of it becomes unrealistic and impractical for some people? I am going to say that because they'll have this long list of things that it's like, and, and let's be real. I'm just, I'm, it, it, some of it is lighthearted, but it's true. They want someone who is wealthy. They want someone who's this and this and that. And then the question is, but are you wealthy? Are you this and that? What, how much of it has to be, if we require that of someone else, how much of that did we have to look in the mirror and how ideal or perfect are we? Well, I think everybody's entitled to, um, to have a personal preference in regards to what they want. I think everybody's entitled to have that. So if you want somebody short, tall, big, small, rich, poor, however, you're entitled to have that preference for what you want. I think the, the reality aspect comes into play when you are not attaining those things that you're seeking, right? And you got to be realistic. Say, okay, listen, I want to keep looking for it or this probably ain't going to work. So, and I think that's where that balance comes in. When we compromise and do things that we typically, you know, because I had an old football coach told me a long time ago, if you got to think twice about it, you probably shouldn't do it. And we know sometimes we're doing things that we probably shouldn't do. Like if we help somebody with this, you might be helping them, but you know they can't pay you back. You may be doing some other things, you know, probably compromise, compromise with more compass. You know, I don't want to do that. We know we're doing that, right? When we start talking about settling and, and, and things like that, personal preference is fine. I, I have no problem with that. But you got to kind of be realistic about how long am I going to – this you look what uh, gravitates to me. Sometimes, you know, just outside of relationships, you know, typically from a professional standpoint, um, people can say, I don't want to work here. I don't want to do these particular things. Uh, and that's fine because they have plenty of suitors coming in, offering them all kinds of jobs and different kind of opportunities and things like that. But if you don't have those particular things coming, you can be waiting and saying what you do, what you want and what you don't want to do. But being realistic, is that going to happen, right? Sometimes people naturally have particular things fall in their lap. You see that with me and all the athletes where they get a contract and stuff, uh, uh, usher to them and everything. And it's kind of like the same thing with, with relationships. I, like I said, again, I'm very big. I think everybody's entitled to what they want. When I have people say, how could you want this and you don't have that? You, that's fine. I see nothing wrong with that. But you got to be realistic. Are those particular things coming your way? And if they not, um, are you okay with waiting to that particular thing, you know, falls in your lap? If you are, great. If you're not, you know, you might want to rethink things. So that's just kind of my take in regards to yeah. the selling thing. I, I just think that um, we know we're doing things we probably shouldn't be doing, right? We know that, right? Mm -hmm. And then some things, uh, depending from the way experience has taught us, you know, if you don't know a person well enough, things like that. But then, even then you still have the decision. Um, well, if you want to do it or not, well, I'm, you know, I like you, but I don't know you well enough to give you this or do that for you. That's, you know, we, we have decision to do that. But I, I do think from a preference standpoint, you can have it. But realistically, if, if those things come your way or not, that's what we probably need. To stop. I think a lot of people don't necessarily rethink things. And then and things don't come that way. They may say they settle. But I think what we feel like we may settle on sometimes is probably what more than likely usually comes our way. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what a great um, feedback, a great response. Thank you for sharing that because I think you're right. We all have the right 
um, to want anything, right? And I think there are times that maybe you have to be balancing that and saying, if you want to date a billionaire person, <laughs> where is that really coming from too? What's your real motive in that? Is it genuine and authentic or is it something superficial? And at the end of the day, you also have the right to be superficial. Um, but I guess making sure, of course, we all want to be as healthy as possible and not hurting other people. Pastor Atkins, I've got to turn the, my sight to you. You have a very clear understanding, as someone mentioned earlier, that we're living in a world of social media, right? And and we, we see the he said yes, she said yes, I said yes. Yes, and it goes viral. And uh, sometimes I have a questioned, and, and I say this it wholeheartedly, um, have things been put out for lights of going viral? Or uh, are we doing it for the right reasons? And you don't know, right? You know this as a pastor. It's never uh, healthy to question anybody's faith or intent if you don't know. And, and I don't want to make any assumptions. But there's so many people out there um, that I wonder if they really want the real relationship or they want the, the selfies that come with it or they want it's Valentine's Day coming up right while we're having this conversation. Look what she got me. Look what he got me. Uh, how do you balance wanting something genuine, genuine, right? And, and you know that you've been married for a very long time. Something genuine that will last and sustain versus saying, but I, I, I kind of want to be in the in club where some, they're being taken out for their birthday. I want to be in that in club for that. How do you balance that? We all want to be happy, right? I think in the end, it comes down to us getting to a space in our lives where we are really looking at our intentions and that was mentioned earlier of what are what are you really um, going into this relationship for why are you um, taking a look at um, this person or uh, this people you have to remember that if you are marrying somebody that you are marrying not only that person but you're also marrying that family and um, yes, this is a great time for technology and to see the um, beautiful uh, pictures and everything online. <laughs> However, I tell couples that I'm counseling, I'm counseling one now that, hey, look, if you are not true about the relationship and the commitment and the intention behind what you're doing, the pictures will fade. The social media accounts will also fade because while you might be able to see this right now, it's only going to be temporary. Mm -hmm. And so my encouragement to everyone is that we seek within ourselves. I, I have in my book, it's called Listen to Your Heart. And this is so different mm -hmm. than um, some of the things that we talk about. We talk about our head a lot and our thinking and what we want. And as Dante was talking about some of the preferences that we sometimes have, but in the end, you were born and you have in you the ability to distinguish between what is genuine and what is not genuine. And I really encourage everyone to be honest with themselves and to understand what the intention is in whatever relationship you're doing, whatever you're trying to go out there for. If you are trying to get likes, then tell yourself that is what I'm trying to do. If you are going into a relationship for the genuineness, I'm going to tell you it's hard work and that you're going to have to do this and get up every day and you have to make a choice to be in that relationship. You have to make a choice to be the best you and the best version of you every day. And that's the intention that comes behind someone who wants something genuine versus someone who just wants to put you know, anything out there. I can put a picture out there and make it look nice. But the question is, it, when you're at home, are you really being that genuine and it's nice to be able to share, but you don't have to share if it's genuine. You can just live the life. That's a great point. And I think either way, sir, there are people that share where it's genuine and there are people that don't share and it's genuine. And I think people have to decide what works. I will say this. We all know pop culture where there have been couples that have gone on these reality shows and the relationship has plummeted because sometimes there's so many people in it that they come under a microscope 
and then every little thing has becomes questioned. Some people have capitalized off that financially, as we know, on social media. But for some people, it is ruined things. So I guess people have to make that decision. Jackie, I don't want to be remiss. We have some questions and comments that I did want to acknowledge. I want to shoot you this question. But some one of our listeners out of Atlanta, thank you so much, and one of our viewers said, I'm certainly okay with waiting. People who settle end up at the bottom. Thank you for sharing your opinion of that. We appreciate it. Another um, a viewer out of Atlanta said, I do have a question in regards to the settling. A friend once told me that we all settle in some shape or form. I know everyone isn't perfect. Uh, you know, Jackie, what are your thoughts on that? Of course, you have been married for a very long time to an amazing uh, man who's also an exercise wellness expert. Um, but there was a time where you weren't always married, and I'm sure you have friends that have a diverse background and current present. Um, what do you think of that for our viewer in Atlanta who said her friend said everyone settles at some point? Well, I don't know. <laughs> It, I guess it would be t t your definition of settling, right? I don't know if it if I would use the word settling. Um, we have to compromise. I would prefer to use that word. We compromise, right? Versus actually settling, like Tinsley said, because you don't want to just settle for things that you don't feel comfortable with in a relationship. But being married, um, I've been married for 23 years. There's a compromise. Um, in a relationship. So I would say to that viewer, not settle, but you have to compromise. And that's the word I would like to use instead of so. Wow. Thank you. Great response and great answer. Uh, we're back to you, Ms. Jones. You are our in-house therapist with us tonight. You are watching National Award winning Let's Talk America with host Shana Thornton. Of course, I'm Shana, on-air host and executive producer. The panel with us, they are amazing. They are inspiring. They're motivating. They're educating us with their different backgrounds tonight. Uh, thank you for all the kudos, all the messages coming in. I think this panel, the right group of people with diverse backgrounds, who are making it happen. Um, I, Ms. Jones, but I, I've got to ask this. So many of us grow up with the notion that there is a, a prince or a princess on a white horse that's going to come and they're going to rescue us away from all of our problems, be it financial, emotional, spiritual, all of that. And, you know, we talked about recognizing other people having issues or things that we're not willing to compromise with or settle with and walk away. But how much of us. This is the reflection of us now. It's time to look in that mirror for us right now. How many of us um, actually get to the point where we say someone has to fix us? Someone needs to fix us. And Ms. Jones, I know she was on with us. I, I don't see her anymore, so I'm sure she's going to jump back on. She could have had some Wi-Fi issues. But Tinsley, we're going to roll that back over to you when she joins back on. But how much of that requires us to say Maybe I'm trying to look for someone to fix me, but at the end of the day, all of that lies with Tinsley, Deontay, Pastor Atkins, and Jackie. Right. It's always a bad decision to go into a relationship looking for something that way. I'm going to get in this relationship so he can help me pay my bills. I'm going to get in this relationship so I can use his car. I'm going to get in this relationship so that he can help get my hair done every week. I'm going to get in this relationship so that I can borrow money whenever I need it. So you're already going in with a hidden motive and you haven't even really brought anything into that relationship. You already know what you want from it, though. What does he want from it? Have you both talked about, you know, the importance of balance in that relationship? Is it something that, you know, you both feel good about? Is he going to furnish those things for you? Do you have those for yourself? Why are you expecting him to do it? You know, mm -hmm. I feel like at the beginning of it, I had to log off social media some years ago and work on myself. And it took a while for me to get back on my feet for some things I'd gone through adversity, all kind of things that I'd gone through. And in order for me to do that, I had to get off the computer. I had to get off of looking at everything on there and, you know, mm -hmm. low key comparing myself and low key going, Oh, look at that. I'm not going, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Oh, look at that person. You know, I did that a lot and I didn't realize it. And it was a mind thing for me. If I wanted my finances straight, I had to go find a better paying job at the time. You know, if I wanted to, for, re, for example, last year I purchased a home. If I wanted to purchase a home, I had to get off and get my money. Thank you. In a struggling economy too. But I had to get off and get myself wow. together financially <laughs> to do that. Distractions will keep you set back. And so with that relationship, you can, in, in my opinion, you just honestly and truly can't go in with that kind of motive. Not like that. Not in a way like you're trying to use somebody. 
of course you want to be in a relationship with someone that you can, you know, eventually lean on and that person can lean on you, you know, for finances, support, mm -hmm. whether it's mind stuff, whether it's just support for your business, whether it's support for the bills around the house, you want that. Everybody wants to be, you know, cared for and loved in that way where they're receiving something and they're able to give something and it's a balance and you love doing that. But to go in with the mindset of, I'm not doing nothing unless he do this for me first, or I'm not going to give her no dinner unless she give me that cookie or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It has to be more than just this ulterior motive. That's the wrong mindset. You know, you yeah. have to be mature enough and you're not going to get there if you're not mature enough up here to know that those things don't matter at the top. Are you get yourself together and those type of things will attract you. The right mate will be attracted to you, in my opinion, at some point. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great information, great feedback. I think you're right. You have to really stay grounded in what you want. And you're right. Thank you for being transparent of saying you were comparing yourself to other people. And that wasn't fair. And I will say this, we've heard this cliche and adage for so long. Comparison really is the enemy of happiness. Right. Because what's for Tinsley is for Tinsley and what's for Jack is for Jackie and what's for Tennille is for Tennille Jones. And we cannot make comparisons and say, but they did this and they did that. Uh, you know, Deontay, I've, I've got to put this question to you before we have another question from our amazing viewers that are watching us right now from all over the country. Thank you for watching us. Um, but let's talk about relationships models that exist. Right. And I think it's fair to say that I think most of us on right now, we are Xers, right? We're Xers. We're, we're 40 plus. And we may have seen something that looked more traditional or something that looked different. But how much of what we've seen grow up makes us think that's normal when we're trying to build or maintain a relationship in life with someone romantic or if it's just simply a friendship, a rapport of any type. How much of the past of our childhood, right? What mom and dad did with their friends, how much of that really haunts or shapes us 40 years later? I think initially, found that, well, foundationally, it, it, it's pretty much we see that that's the right way to be. But, you know, as we grow and we evolve, we you learn through experiences that's not always going to be the case. I was raised by my grandparents. And, you know, so you're looking at old school grandmother, grandfather, um, grandmother. My grandfather was a majority breadwinner. My grandmother took care of a lot of things at the house. Uh, she was a housekeeper also. Uh, it's a totally different dynamic now. We have women with careers. They're making um, uh, more money. And in a lot of cases, they're making you know, equal amounts of their spouse or more. You can't think the same. I think a lot of times, to be honest with you, from past generations, um, women had to more so go with the flow with everything because they were they were just stuck. They couldn't leave, right? So it wasn't it, it, the whole uh, point of having a voice uh, wasn't there. So now they can make decisions where they can come and go, things like that. So people have to actually, uh, as opposed to what we may have seen in past relationships, they got to kind of work things out, right? So that is probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed from, you know, looking at my grandparents and from, uh, from their generation, even since with my mom and dad's generation, what we're doing just the whole evolu uh, evolution of, of women, being able to uh, have capacity to do more things like that, because you truly now have to have some kind of understanding because it's like, you know, now no one's stuck. Everybody can kind of go, go, you know, financially, you may have some issues here and now, but for the most part, uh, either party making, you know, come and go as they please. So you have to really say, do I really want to be with this person or not? And I think that's probably something that uh, as of right now, uh, we couldn't look back at before that whole, I don't, it wasn't that much compromising. It's just, this is what, it, this is what it is. And you, you're stuck. You just can't, you, you can't get out of it. So I think that's probably the biggest dynamic that is different from we're looking at past generation, what we've seen probably growing up. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And that's such a great point. There are some obvious things that people uh, agree or disagree with divorce rate that's going on right now around the globe, not just the United States. The reality is more and more individuals, women are educated now and their pockets do look very different than it did 50, 60 years ago. And of course, I think any sociologist will tell any of us that that's a correlation perhaps with people. Maybe they were unhappy. Maybe it was an abusive relationship and maybe not even abusive, maybe just unhappy, married the wrong person or grew out of love and now saying, why spend the next 35 years doing this? with their options and not even necessarily about maybe someone else they're targeting of saying, I can be free with me. 
And that it may be revolutionary to the generation before us, but it certainly that seems to be embraced with so many um, that do decide if the breakup is necessary. We've got some great questions rolling in. I'm going to move it straight to you, Atino Jones. Thanks for being back with us. Someone said when talking about the women or men who do compare what's going on on social media with their current building of a relationship or stable relationship. She said, do you think these women go in with that motive because they be, because they have girlfriends who are, have partners or mates that are doing those things for them? That's a great question. Um, I think it could be various things. Nobody really, we're human beings. We're not designed to be alone. So nobody wants to be alone. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is, you know, people not necessarily living for the moment, the present. I know that um, Randy talked about this as well. Like, you know, what's happening in the here and now? What are my emotions? What are my thoughts? What's my heart telling me? And so it's easy to probably compare because if I have that, then I might experience or get rid of this sadness that I feel um, because that's the emotion that nobody wants to deal with as well. And so it could be that people go into comparing. It could just be that, again, the heart wants what the heart wants, but um, really just being present and what do you need? And again, what's your purpose and staying connected to who you are and having just patience. I think that's also important to like patience because if you date the wrong person uh, just for the sake of being in a relationship and, you, and it ends, then you kind of start over again looking for somebody else. So just having patience and just focusing on yourself can be very beneficial. And share, right. share who you are. Share who you are. People will love that. Yeah, share who you are. We're talking about the S word here on Let's Talk America with the host Shane at Thornton Radio. We appreciate you watching our podcast episode tonight. We're talking about building and maintaining healthy relationships in 2024. Speaking of sharing, Pastor Atkins, I've got to ask you this. We've got a great question from another viewer here in Atlanta. She said, people always say you simply can't take baggage into a new relationship. But realistically, Pastor, how is that not possible? She's got a great point, right? If you've had a hiatus of three months or even three years, right, of who we are builds us, right, to some degree. If we've grown up in a happy, positive home where we can share, we've had the opportunity to share. So when we talk about a relationship that may have been toxic or bad from 10 years ago, how can we realistically expect that person to move on and meet you a decade later and say, all of that has been erased. I'm brand new now. I said the reset button. Help us out. Hey, this is something we all have to deal with, right? Is that our past comes with baggage or uh, many times I like to give the analogy of every time you are going through something, say I keep putting on a layer of clothing. So I have this on at this moment and I keep putting on new clothing all the time for whether it's issues that happen in my life, problems that have come up. The last time I was with somebody, they said this. The last time I did this, it, it, this happened to me. And you're not even with the same person. So you have brought baggage that has affected you. And sometimes this baggage can come from your when you were a child. It can come from when you were with family or friends. Whatever it is, it's something that you have brought into a new relationship. So my thing to everyone and encouragement to you is you got to deal with yourself first. And I'm going to keep saying this because if you don't, your relationships will end up in a pattern and you will keep coming back to the same thing over and over and over again. And many times the baggage that we carry or all of the clothes that we have, it kind of, it doesn't allow us to be in a space where we can see authentically who I am in a relationship. You will begin to question that, hey, how can I do this? I'm going to en encourage you to start doing things such as looking back and talking to a therapist, talk to your pastor, someone that knows that can guide you down a path where you can start to take off all of those layers of clothes or whatever baggage you got, because those things will block your view of exactly who you are supposed to show up as in the relationship. How can you show up in a relationship and you don't know who you really are? You're going to confuse that person no matter who they are. And you find out that you keep going into these relationships and you're like, it's got to be them. And then I tell you, if you're carrying baggage, then you're the one that's got all of this heavy weight on you. 
wouldn't it be better to start to let go of some of that baggage and begin to move forward? The only way we can get into the here and now is I do have to get rid of some of those baggages. And whoever sees me from my past, they're going to know I'm different. They're going to hear me talk different. They're going to hear me walk different. They're going to hear me seeing and saying things differently because you will be showing up as a different person. And I encourage everyone because sometimes it's your family in the relationships that you have there that are always trying to pull you back to where you were. I am no longer a child. I'm almost 50. And ain't no way you're going to tell me I'm like I was when I was in my teens or I was when I was in my 20s. So I encourage everyone as we're moving into relationships, don't carry that baggage with you. You got to find a way to get rid of that baggage. And I encourage you, go to a therapist. It, it, ain't, it ain't bad to have a therapist. It's really good to have a therapist because they can help you begin to look within yourself so yeah. that you can become better. And then you can show up in these relationships the way that you should. Yeah, that, and I, I love that because that is being accountable and that is putting the mirror on us and not saying that people cannot do things to us, but at some point you've got to know when to fix yourself, right? You've got to know when you need um, more help. You, and sometimes you can do that solo and sometimes you simply can't. What a great conversation we're having here. We're coming up on an hour, and so we don't want to hold people, but it's been such a great conversation. I want to give each of my panelists one lap to give us two minutes or less the best piece of love advice you have been told or that you've experienced firsthand or advice that you wish you had known that you didn't know that you realize now, and it's never too late to learn. I'm going to start with you, Jackie. Best piece of love advice for those out there that are maybe looking to build or maybe they're looking to transition out. They want happiness. They want peace. They know there's there's one life here and they don't want to waste it. Help them out. What would be your advice? Well, the first thing is you have to truly love yourself first in order to be able to give to someone else. And in order for you to do that, Shana, like I said before earlier, you have to start by loving yourself from the inside out. And if you do that, if you truly love yourself, then I believe that you can be able to love others. But you have to take care of loving yourself first. That's so important. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll continue while she is, is out. <laughs> other the other part I'll Thank I'll say you. at this moment. Technical difficulties. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, I, I'll Thank I'll go ahead and say a quick bit. I, love, I was just I was talking, but I think it was some technical issues. Thank you, Jackie. We appreciate that. Love yourself, Pastor Atkins. Best piece of love advice for 2024. Forgiveness, and I'm going to encourage everyone <laughs> to um, not only forgive others that are around you, but uh, forgive yourself and uh, make sure you have grace for yourself because that's the way you can begin to love yourself, as Jackie was saying earlier. And when we begin down this path of forgiveness, many people that I talk to say, I'll, I can forgive, but I'll never forget. But I promise you that if you do not get to a space where you can forget, when I say forget, that means that you can be in this space right now without having triggers and emotions kind of drive you then you will be in a space where you can then start to love yourself and you can then also love others. So forgiveness is what I would share with each and every one of you. I love that. And, and that is such a great point. Forgive and in particular, forgive yourself so you can believe that you can start over again and have the opportunity for love. And even at this self-love. Let's not forget that because that self-love is so key as we opened up the programming, talking about having yourself balanced and together. Tinsley, best piece of advice. You've, you've coached lots of people. You've been through things yourself. What would you like to share with our uh, viewing audience tonight? Yes. <clears throat> Working to reach a level of peace and being okay if you never truly find that relationship with someone when just like Jackie said, and everyone's been saying, when you love yourself and you've reached a level of peace, things don't even feel the same anymore in a good way. Meaning you don't feel resentful towards people like you're used to. You don't have all those grudges. You're just yeah. at peace. You go on your patio and you water your flowers, you're drinking your sweet tea 
or an adult beverage, whatever you want to drink, you're out there enjoying yourself and nothing, you're really unbothered for real, for real. It, being unbothered in life, letting go of resentment, you know, and just like the pastor said, forgiveness, no resentment. Resentment is a poison. When you resent people, everything about them get on your nerves. Like if if I resented you, Shanna, and you messaged me and went, oh, I'd love you to be on my show. I'd be like, mm, I remember that time three years ago she did this. You know, you cannot spend the rest of your life with that mindset. So, you know, letting go of resentment and truly reaching a level of peace and being OK. Like me, I'm single still. I date. I have fun. But being OK with being single, loving your own company to a point where you're not forcing yourself to do it. It's just natural. Like when I get off this, I'm going to have some salmon and watch one of my favorite shows. And I'm OK with that. I don't care if somebody call me. I'm good over here. Be good over there. Be good where you at. I love it. <laughs> I certainly love it. Thank you. Uh, Deontay Burden, sir, best piece of advice on love or that will help those in 2024 build and maintain a healthy relationship? I think the best piece of advice is uh, don't ever lose yourself. Always make sure that you are a priority and you're happy with yourself. You don't lose yourself trying to make someone else happy. But, 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 be very, very fair and realistic about for what you want for yourself. Is it fair to somebody else? Are you going to be too selfish to want what you want, but it's going to impose or take away from somebody else? You got to be realistic about that. You know, love yourself, but you got to make sure you're being fair too. And I think if you can kind of keep that balance with that, because far too often people lose themselves and then things go a certain way and they can, you don't want to ever throw up in somebody's face, well, I did this, I did this, you know, for you. And if you did, you want to be doing it because you're being genuine, right? So, again, keep yourself first. But like I said, just make sure you're being fair in regards to the other person with your wants and what you want to be doing. Yeah. What great advice. You are right about that and true to yourself. And so there's a true balance and no resentment or bitterness because someone before you mentioned that you don't want to be bitter. You don't want to be uh, resentful. And perhaps when they're doing things, thinking if I do all of this, he and she are going to be with me and love me forever. And uh, I once heard someone say this on a program and it was very real. There's nothing that stops someone from waking up one morning and saying, I just don't want to do this anymore. And so at the end of the day, and I think each of you have echoed that, you've got to be able to have that balance within yourself to be resilient enough to keep moving one way or the other. If you call it off or if they call it off. Ms. Jones, we're ending with you, of course, an acclaimed therapist. You work with so many different people. Um, I want to hear your best piece of love advice, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't ask this question. And it's sort of like the elephant in the room that no one brings up. And I'm going to simply ask it because it's real talk for real people. Uh, is it realistic that some of us will just not find love in our lifetime that is worthy? I, I know that's a lot to put on you as a therapist. You're like, I'm a therapist. Don't put that life question on me. But is that fair to say? Because when I hear Tinsley speak, and I've had so many friends of both genders say, well, you know, I'm good, and, I, and I've had some friends say, I don't, I'm not even sure it will happen for me. And there's always a part of me, someone who loves the underdog, and not saying because someone's not in love, they're the underdog, but I love movies of Rocky where people do get what they want because I know people that do want love. They do want a long, meaningful partnership, but it hasn't happened for them, and they're starting to say around certain ages of 56 or 57 years old, it's, it may not happen for me. Uh, it, when we look at the numbers, and I know at the end of the day, I'm not trying to make you uh, someone who's looking at the stats or someone that's, that's being able to have a crystal ball and tell us what happens. But one, uh, is it possible that love may not happen? And if that is the case, if that is the case, as a therapist, what would be your guidance to being able to be okay with that? And I love it because someone in our comments said, Tinsley, they love your response. They said, I'm good. So they're saying they love what you did. Thumbs up on that. Help us out, Ms. Jones. Okay, well, I want to take the time. I do believe it's okay to compare. So when you do meet someone, whether it's a person that you want to be with, a person that you want to be friends with, compare these definitions of all these words we keep saying, like self-love, love, respect, trust, because your definition of respect is going to be different from mine. Your definition of love is going to be different okay. from mine. And so when we say, I want you to love me, how does that, what does that mean? What does that look like behaviorally? And I think as, as much as we can do that, again, not just in our um, intimate relationships, but our friendships, our 
our relationships with our family, our relationships with our coworkers, then it helps us now understand what are we, are we on the same team? Right? Are we are we playing for the same things? And sometimes I think then that might even the playing field a little bit. And I and to yeah. answer your question, you know, if we have experienced joyful things in our lives, maybe it's okay to just like, you know, what? I did eat this cake. It was good. Maybe it's gone now, but I have experienced those things. It's yeah. okay to reflect and see when in your life you have experienced love, you've had joy, and just express gratitude in those moments. And I think that will open you up to being able to connect to love to someone in a meaningful way, whether it's companionship, friendship, um, you know, maybe a relationship at work, maybe not in the ways that you believe it needs to be defined, mm -hmm. but maybe in a different way. So that's kind of what I would say about that. But definitely yeah. define all these it. words because it's so important that you're on the same page with somebody who you are interested in being close with. That's a great point because you're all right. And that's something that wasn't mentioned that when we say we want to be loved, we want to feel secure, whatever your definition of a relationship may be, it may be exclusivity. It may be whatever it is. You're right. Is that person on the same page? Because I don't need to tell each of you that are on this panel, the word, the buzzword of 2023 was situationship, <laughs> whatever that meant, right? <laughs> well, we deal with each other and it's not really exclusive. We got this miscellaneous thing going on, but there's no definition. Uh, and there are many experts that said that causes confusion, that cause, that leads to bitterness for someone getting hurt. And I think you're right, Ms. Jones, it would take the therapist to bring that out for us to make sure that you're on the same page in some way um, and figuring out, as Jackie said, what that compromise looks like. Um, and I've got to ask you this, your best piece of love advice for 2024 coming from you, what what will, will likely be words of wisdom um, somehow for someone listening and watching us? Yeah. So in addition to the compare those words and those definitions, you don't have to suffer to experience greatness. I know that that's kind of what people believe. If you didn't work hard for it, it wasn't earned. It's okay to kind of ease into things and enjoy and feel good the whole time. Don't feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm not suffering yet, so I got to keep working on it. Um, you don't have to suffer for, <laughs> suffer to be on the top. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm going to put in layman's terms, Ms. Jones, are you saying that there doesn't have to be 10th degree drama for the relationship to take place? <laughs> it can be peaceful and it can be great. And you can have genuine or genuine relationship, right? And whatever that looks like, because well, I know we, we did make light part of the situationship, but for some people, I guess it depends on definition, that can be happiness for them, right? We do want to point out that when you talk about building on something, everyone does not have marriage as an end goal. Everyone does not have being exclusive as an end goal. For some people, it may be someone to go to the movie with once every three months, right? Yeah. I'm glad you said that not to barge in, Shannon. I know we got to go, but dating is healthy. Yeah. That is so healthy. Like for single people that's going, oh, I haven't found true love. It's not a long-term relationship. That's what keeps me occupied too. I date. I yeah. may not do nothing every night, every day, but dating keeps you. You're like, okay, just like, you know, um, Tanel said, you know, you're experiencing something. I'm still attracted. I still got it. He took me out. We had a good time. You know, we ate on to the next thing. It's just like that auntie that don't want no kids. She might not want no kids, but she's going to go get your kid every now and then, baby, say, have a little fun, then she's going to give it back because she don't have no kids. You know, it's not permanent for her. So you're just okay to not be in a long-term relationship, but you have fun at the dinner, you have fun at the movies, and then you guys just kicking it every now and then. That's okay for a while. And then, like yeah. she said, you decide if you want to go a little further with that. Are you on the same page? You know, but date along the way. That's healthy. Wow, that's a, such a great point, because like I said, there are different definitions of what makes people happiness. And sometimes if someone's come out of something or been in something or they're like, that's not what I want, but making sure you match in so many ways of what you're looking for. And also, I think realistically, being able to recognize that sometimes, right, Jackie, Pastor Atkins, Deontay and Miss Jones, that sometimes people can start off this way, but realistically, that doesn't mean that's what they're looking for five years from now, right? Correct. Yeah, that's yeah, something. Correct. So, you know, you could you could end up in a space where you've changed yeah. and also they've changed. 
That's so right. you have to continue to be in a space where, um, as Tanel stated, that uh, you got to consistently be uh, re-identifying all of those terms that you have been describing right. as time goes on. Yeah, that's such a great point because you're right. If they're saying, well, I don't want a relationship when you first met them and they were fine with just going out and hanging out. But then, and I think this is where the situationships get a little messy, right, Jackie? Where then all of a sudden he has developed feelings and he does want more, but she's still saying, no, no, she's dating seven other people, right? Because that was the understanding when they met. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe for some people. <laughs> I can't speak to that one though. <laughs> but whatever, whatever they're seeking, right? In that sense. But making sure they're being honest and on the same page. Do you think the transparency part is true, uh, Mr. Burden? Sorry, I had a phone on mute, uh the mic on mute. I think it's very important because at the end of the day, you know. I always you know, go back to my grandfather I taught me you don't want to start lying you you be done forgot your lies you don't <laughs> lie so much but uh I, I think if you go through the hurdle just let everything know you know up front you can't go back later and say well I didn't know this I didn't know that you just got to be you know everybody got to you know genuinely accept each other so I do think it, and but have discretion with it everything doesn't need to be known up front Right. Everything is, you know, you want to be transparent to the level of what you guys progress. And, and that can vary. And I, I would tell people to kind of go with your intuition on that. Uh, they don't need to know your Social Security bank account information, you know, when you first meet up, anything like that. But um, things that you deem at that level, and that's kind of tricky. So, like I said, I leave that to everybody's discretion. But I do think um, when questions are asked that, you know, y'all at that level, I think you do need to be honest with that because that's only fair and right. Uh, to be doing that. Yeah. yeah, that's such a great point. Jackie, I'll let you have the last word of our, our panel. Um, when he mentioned Social Security, finances, right? That's one aspect of building a relationship. But as you being a health advocate for exercise and wellness, uh, how important is it if someone says we're meeting, we want to match, we want to complement each other, and that person is driven to be in shape as much as possible, and the other person's not, how key is it to complement each other even when it comes to matters of our health? Um, now that is very important. I have counseled and worked with individuals where um, when it comes to exercise or a healthy relationship or being healthy, um, the spouse is into working out and the other one is not. That can be a problem. Um, and so that is something that, that I've known um, things and, and couples to have break up from that. But again, you have to be, when we talk about, um, you have to be honest with yourself and, and, and come from a place of love in regards to this person, not about the, um, I don't wanna say the aesthetic side of it, not about that side, the, the superficial, I said, I should use that word, yeah. but you wanna bring it from a healthy point. And I believe that if you come in from taking it from, I care about you, um, I want you to be healthy. I want you to live a long life. If you make uh -huh. it about that versus the superficial side of the outward appearance, then I yeah. think then the relationship can prosper and say, let's do this together. You know, not one person doing it by themselves. And that's what happens a lot of time in relationships. One person is working on it yeah. and we're not doing this together. So having Good those point. open conversations about what it looks like to be healthy together, I think, will um, manifest in your relationship um, working out when it comes to, to the health part of it. That's a very valid point, because even when it comes to working out, or as you often talk about eating healthy as well, because as people do build and think about living together or building a life together, you don't want someone necessarily that's convinced, I'm only going to buy vegetarians because I'm veg vegetables because I'm vegan versus someone who's eating meat and potatoes 24 seven. And, and there are things minor that we know that people are gonna have differences in, even some major things, right? Because we are individuals, but you don't necessarily think want someone who's thinking they're coming home to a steak and potato meal, and they're coming home to, um, let's be real, a, a juicing uh, drink that's sitting on the table. That could cause some heat in the home, I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah, but like I said, there is it's a balance, right? And again, yeah. if you if you look at it from a healthy point, uh, we're doing this, um, and I hope it's not just someone that's juicing because it has to be different. You want to look at the overall 
meal in itself being healthy. Right. There are vegetables, there are other things. That's Just right. if the person wants to juice, the other person can say, okay, well, I'm going to eat healthy in this right. way. So you have to plan those things out. Um, and you don't want to bash the way one person is doing it. But again, you want to make it something that we can do together. Okay. Um, and find a compromise. If you're juicing, then I'm going to do it this way. Correct. Or perhaps there are juicing communities out there that exist. I'm totally joking. <laughs> <laughs> all my juicers and all my friends do not get mad at me. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. What an amazing uh, panel. If you ever want to give a virtual clap to all of our uh, panelists, we had the one and only Deontay Burton on with us. We had the one and only Tinsley Bradford on with us. We had the amazing Jackie Madison on with us. And we also had the one and only Pastor uh, Randy Atkins on with us. And last but certainly not least, our in house therapist who's a friend of this show, Tennille Jones, with us on. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for what a very important conversation. If you're watching this on demand, I encourage you to share this in Messenger on Facebook. It also will be on YouTube. You can do Facebook or YouTube at LTA Radio, at LTA Radio. We want you to share this because this conversation mattered. And it's one you can also share with your teens or preteens as well because this is a G-rated family show. We were talking about building and maintaining healthy relationships. And that's what we have to do in our communities. We've got to maintain it to the point that I referenced with uh, Ms. Jones, our therapist. It doesn't have to be drama. It doesn't have to be toxic. You don't have to suffer to have love. And I think perhaps for so many different families, that's all they're seeing. So they think, wow, God, we've got to go through this. That's the up and downs of love. And it's not to say that things do not have ups and downs, but you've got to know what's healthy and what's working for you. And I'm going to say this with the little eyes that are watching you. What are we passing on with the legacy of what's to be tolerated and what's okay to see? So just keep that in mind as we all prosper in 2024. I thank you for watching Let's Talk America Radio with your host, Shana Thornton. It's been my pleasure to have you on. Stay connected to us. You can check out our website or simply on all of your social media platforms, LTA Radio. That's LTA Radio. Thank you. And I know you would agree with me that we're going to have to have this panel back on again to cover more subjects. Everyone have an amazing Valentine's Day. If you don't have a Valentine's I'm sending love and hugs your way wherever you are. Make it the best and be in love with yourself because you deserve it. Take care, everyone, and keep it going. Stay informed. Let's Talk America Radio offers real talk for real people. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.